Hey, how you going, you big bloody beautiful bastard? Here's me face. You are not watching Ossie's Man Review. You're watching Cheeky and Cultured. I'm YC. Second angle. No mucking about here. 2020 really is one hell of a train ride. Or should I say roller coaster ride? I mean, in many ways, really. Humanity and nature, technology, social life. Items like one of these. A mask become a personality trait. Education. We would never see the world the same way as we did before. Anyway, enough said, blokes and shoes. Now it's time to dig in and find out what the fuck happened in 2020. Donald Trump decided to bomb the shit out of the former Iraqi Qudus Force leader, Salami, and that triggers a wide scene of fear over World War Three. And that's just the third day in, January the 3rd. That really set a scene for the remaining of 2020. It's just a shit show happening in slow motion. Just as we were partying hard, celebrating this new year, this mysterious virus, or I should say the elephant in the room, of the Rona, came up in a wet market in Wuhan, China. And of course, as we all know, the rest was history. Kobe Bryant, who tragically lost his life in a helicopter crash the same month, and also Italy going into a state of emergency with just two cases in the same month and gone into lockdown. Poor Australia engulfed in flames for much of their summer, firefighters battling night and day to put out these flames. Meanwhile, we got Scotty Morrison here, AKA the, the Aussie Prime Minister, who's also a bit of a dickhead, decided it was important for him to have a precious little getaway in Hawaii. Residents are gonna be losing their homes. Animals are gonna be dying out. Like these fires, I could go on for bloody ever. This year also includes the passing of a lot of our favourite celebrities. We got John Connery, Caroline Fleck, Chadwick Bosman, Sterling Moss, and also one of my favourite singer of all time, the guy who sang Stacey's Mum, one of my favourite going out songs ever. I mean, literally, that was my pickup line with that song, right? That was my thing back in the days. I befriend the DJ, you know, before the session. I see a girl who's interesting enough that I want to talk to. Cool, I'm gonna give the DJ a thumbs up, he's gonna start playing a song, I walk up to a girl and being like, have you got a daughter? It's a name Stacy because Stacy mum has got me going on, and boom, instant conversation starter. March, that's when we stopped sharing stupid memes about this mysterious, fir mysterious virus because it is now a global thing. TikTok becomes a global sensation when everyone's trying to get on board it. They're doing dance-offs, they're doing Lockdown challenges, they're taking piss out of their own parents, they're asking stupid questions. You got some legends playing the saxophone out from their balcony. They're getting people engaged. The Dutch did it the best. They know how to throw a massive party while socially distanced. And even the frontman of the killers decided to take a piss out of the UK government and their public health measure. But it's just the price I pay. Pornhub decided to give Italy, one of the most sovereign countries, free access to premium content. And that basically triggered a whole scene of people trying to get Italian VPN just so that they could go on board as well. Buongiorno. Another hit from Netflix, Too Hot To Handle, was on air and everyone just gone crazy. The best looking... Rate myself a 10 out of 10. Horniest singletons getting blue balled. Honestly, let's face it, that was trash on telly. But the thing is, it was one of the most relatable trash on telly show because no one is out there meeting people and then you got these lot in this little island locked away from civilization getting blue balled for like the entire month. How relatable is that? Think of your nan. I mean, you know, I've got to give credit for like, you know, whoever that came out of that show. Siberia experienced some of the highest temperatures on record of 38 degrees. 38 degrees. Arctic sea ice coverage has been the second lowest it's ever been on record. And wildfires have been blazing through Siberian forests. Climate change is heating up the Arctic at twice the rate than the rest of the world and the melting sea ice has manipulated polar jet streams. And this has resulted in conditions perfect. These, uh, these zombie fires, these heat waves. No, don't put that in. Don't. Resulting in heat waves exactly like this. And if we don't change our behavior, then we can expect to see events like this in increasing severity and increasing occurrence. 
Anyway, 2020 has been a bit of a messy one. At least we have 2021 to clear it up. September rolls around. Of course, it's freshest week. Liberation of the students. Except not really. It's 2020, fam. Most unions decide to move their freshers online, meaning there is no physical offence. And freshers are basically left alone. I've been a freshers before, and it wasn't like that. It's such a liberation living away from, from your parents the first time. And it's all about, you know, the social life. It's all about this. Mingling. And of course it's 2020. Well, it didn't happen, did it? Trying to follow your, please stay home. Don't stay at home, go out, don't go out, policies. It's not like we're trying to deliberately break, you know, lockdown policies because we don't even know what they are. That's the thing, it changes all the time every 30 seconds. So anyone of any backgrounds, like how are we gonna follow that? I'm not endorsing any kind of illegal activities, any kind of lockdown parties that we saw on press. They pay a lot of money to be in halls. Some of them have to take out loans that they can't give back because they just want the good education that's going to get them out of poverty. And yet, they've been stuck here. The uni just didn't really care about them. People need reduction in rent. And it's such a massive protest at the Uni of Manchester. And of course, you've got people tearing down the fence because we're not cage animals. Students are just normal humans. They are the future of the society. Naturally, people are going to take it down like the Berlin War. The student won and they got 30% Reduction in rent, hashtag student power. Okay, in terms of absurdity, this is my favorite bit of the year that I want to wrap up. Supermarket Iceland decided to send one piece of frozen chicken nugget up into space to celebrate 50 years of moon landing. And that is just the most sensation, sensational thing I've seen like the whole year. I mean, dudes, you must be desperate enough that you're so far away from home working at the International Space Station to a point where you just want frozen chicken nuggets. You want to munch on 12 of them or 20 of them at the same time. And guess what? There was only one arriving because somehow other 19 pieces just disappeared. But whoever you are, that poor person, I hope that you had your fix now. A very serious topic that we simply cannot ignore is racial inequality. Asians were targeted and blamed for causing this pandemic. Black Americans, were killed just because of the colour of their skin. We're all the same colour on the inside. I like to think there is only one race on the face of this earth, the human race. We are all members of the same race. We could see dolphins swimming in Venice. I mean, that's a rare sight. It hasn't happened for even years. That massive hole in the atmosphere is now smaller than ever before. Also, people start paying more attention to their health. They do a lot more hiking, more exercise, more cycling. You can see people who don't really go to the park, go to a park for a walk. Well, I mean, that's mainly because they've been locked in a little box, i.e. their house, for a long time. And so they need that sort of like change of scene. So to answer the question, is 2021 going to be better? The answer is, I think so. If you think about it, now that we've got people learning new skills, apparently the British public spend more time than ever before to learn a new language. Maybe that's to prepare for, you know, the post-Brexit life. Everyone will be living abroad. They can start doing a lot more other stuff like traveling abroad without a translator or starting a new business by merging two cultures together. The telecommunication technology has skyrocketed since the start of lockdown. Back in the days when we weren't exactly using stuff like Zoom, but now we do. It's like a, a daily rotation now. We have to use it because we have to communicate it with our friends and families and also our co-workers. And now that cities and towns would change forever, according to NAS Daily, and I completely agree with him on that. We're gonna see an increase in the amount of social nomads, people who could be like in Costa Rica and still managing their business in Spain. Better technology, just literally one button away to see a deal or just to manage their business. And this is great for the world. Working from home or from a greater distance is now a new norm, at least for the next couple of years, maybe the next few decades. People will start thinking about their living quality. They might want to move out to the countryside. They want to live away from the cities. And that means that property prices in cities would be down, making them a lot more affordable for people like me and you, if you ever want to live in a city still, instead of living in the Cotswold. Just saying, it's a really nice place, but I can't really see myself living there. I love a city, a bit like London or Hong Kong. I just wanted to wish you all a happy new year and Thank you as well to YC for letting me be on his channel. 
So thank you very much and Happy New Year, everyone. <laughs> Happy New Year.